Building off of uh, what Craig presented, we're going to take a different scope and look at, the, at carbon footprints. We're going to look at it from the farm scale and talk about a project that we've been working on between the University of Minnesota and the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. It's a pretty big team. Uh, a lot of us are, are engineers on this team. And then we had a couple of students help us along the way as well. So the project is a, is a demonstration pilot project looking at environmental footprints for regional swine production systems now and in the future. Basically, what do footprints look like for Midwest farms right now, and then what are some ways to potentially change those footprints in the future? The, the core or the crux of this project was that with this hot topic of sustainability in the industry and the availability of some tools and calculators to estimate those sustainability metrics, uh, we feel that we're in a position to help producers be stronger participants in these conversations about sustainability and, con and conservation. And that by uh, integrating extension with the, with the pork board and the industry and then producers, we can have some shared programming to increase that conversation and then ultimately improve um, or reduce any environmental impacts. So the project that we're working on is working with producers to understand these metrics and understand also the language and the, uh, just the basic knowledge with footprints as it is now and what to do in the future. So there are lots of tools in the toolbox, um, but the pork board has, has developed some over the years. Uh, Craig alluded to some of their calculations that they've done, but they built a pork production environmental footprint calculator. And with their previous LCA, there is some, the pork board has set some goals for 2020 to decrease the national average carbon footprint of the U.S. Uh, by 5% and then the water footprint as well. But how do, we, how do we know where we are as individual farms and then how do we move in that direction? Well, we, with this project, we took the environmental footprint calculator that the pork board developed. It's an online software, free online software that's available to download. And we use this with some of our, our uh, regional farms. So I was not involved in, uh, directly in the development of this calculator. So we're just users of this calculator, helping people understand what it is and how, it can, um, how they can use it and what they can learn from it moving forward. It provides example footprint, or this is an example footprint that would come out for a wean finished barn. If we look at it a little, little closer, it shows annual contributions to cost and environmental footprints, water, land, uh, carbon, water, land, as well as cost. Um, and then it breaks it down as to where, what are the main sources of these contributions to the footprints and costs. And then finally, for a given uh, footprint, what's the breakdown between feed, manure management, electricity, for example? So what's included in a carbon footprint? This gets back to that question that was asked in the previous session. What's the scope of the footprint? Well, in the original LCA that was done for the swine industry, it was basically from um, um, cradle, cradle to grave or cradle to the product. With uh, the carbon footprint calculator, it's really focusing in on the farm. And I don't expect you to read every single block here. But what the carbon footprint calculator is looking at is from the feed that's produced that goes into those pigs um, to when the pig leaves the farm gate. How many pounds of pig leave the farm gate, for example, based on these inputs? So there's things within this footprint that are within a producer, individual producer's control. There's manure management, uh, the resource usage, mortality management, feed ingredients, and then production efficiency, as was d just recently discussed. I put feed ingredients in italics because with uh, some contractors, for example, maybe the feed ingredients aren't a, aren't a direct decision, and that decision is a little bit out of uh, individual producer's control. So the, outside of producer's management or control, the components that go into these footprints include the power generation and distribution by region. For a state or for a county, for a region, how is, the, how is electricity generated? How is, uh, what are the sources and what's uh, the proportion of renewable energy, for example, in a state or region? And that, so these are some things that do go into uh, the carbon footprint that I'm going to talk about. So as far as the farm level footprints, what we've seen in the uh, grow barns, grow finish barns, is um, on average 50% of the footprint is from manure management. And by footprint, I mean what uh, the footprint is showing what are the em emissions of 
of carbon dioxide equivalent methane or nitrous oxide that contribute to carbon dioxide equivalent. What are those emissions from manure management? What are those emissions that are attributed to feed? 47% in this case. And then the other that composes 3% of the average footprint is electricity and heat, diesel and gasoline. Uh, this is water, basically the movement of water and then dead animal disposal is a very small proportion. For wean finished barns, the distribution is similar, slightly different. Um, manure management a little bit less, feed a little bit um, more, but still 3% is are those on-farm, uh, I'd say um, more of the on-farm uh, production items. So when we look at uh, carbon footprints for wean finished barns and grow finished barns, and all of these footprints are done using a common diet. Not all farms in the region use a common diet, we recognize. But if we just we know that feed is a huge component of that. We wanted to take that part out of it for this analysis. So we used a common diet for all farms that we worked with. And with the wean finished barns, we see them ranging from about 2.25 2, to 2.5. And then over on the grow finished barns, um, we see the range down from a little less than 2 up to 2.5. Two uh, many of these on this side here are tunnel ventilated. Many of these are curtain ventilated or curtain-sided barn, excuse me. Uh, so we can pick out some differences in production styles that do contribute to this, uh, these differences. So what are some of the opportunities? Well, we just saw that feed is about 50% of these footprints for these grow finish and wean finish barns in this area. With feed, uh, it's the, the growing of the crops that go into the feeding of the pigs. And there's a lot of background factors into these analyses that that when we use the calculator, we don't necessarily see, but they're behind that calculator, behind that, in that black box. What it comes down to, though, is that for every, every ration that we use, um, there's a number, of a number of ingredients in that ration, and if we look at the footprint for each individual ingredient, they add up so that you have a footprint per pound of feed. So as an example, uh, for a pound of feed of one finisher diet compared to another finisher diet, the carbon emission uh, potential basically for that diet in pounds of carbon dioxide equivalent per pound of feed uh, in these two are, is a little over 0.5 down to a little over 0.4. So the feed itself has a footprint. It's the feed or the emissions that it took to produce that pound of feed. But whenever we have different feeds, they can, have, they can result in different production efficiencies too. So just because this diet has a higher um, um, footprint per pound of feed, we also need to consider what that uh, feed, uh, how that contributes to the production efficiency and the feed conversion rate of those animals. Manure management was the other huge aspect or other major component to these footprints for these barns, close to 50% again. One thing that we found as we were working through this calculator, like I said, this was not our, we did not develop all the calculations behind it. So as we were playing with different producers, uh, data and looking at how they influence the footprints, we, we came across some things or some calculations that made us look a little bit deeper. One of them was, well, what's the influence of pumping once a year versus twice a year? And based on how the calculator calculates these carbon emissions, by uh, going from two time, or from one time to two times, it, for manure management, dropped the footprint 34% for this farm, 37% for this farm, which because it's about 50%, then drop the overall footprints around 18%. So as a, as a mechanism for potentially changing a footprint, just that pumping frequency can make an influence for the farm level. Now there's implications downstream and we also know that there's other implications for having to pump twice a year versus once a year. But we just wanted to be able to put some of these, some of these points out there so that as people are making decisions uh, they, can, they have a few more factors to weigh in there with their decisions. Another uh, comparison, we have two farms here, slightly different sizes, so their overall footprints are, are different. Again, feed, manure are the major portions of these two footprints, right? If we look at these, these tiny portions, you know, the 3% basically, though, um, this comes down to what's the electricity and heat and diesel gasoline and water used on these farms. So these are things that can 
um, these, uh, these components of an operation, the electricity use, diesel gasoline use, they have an influence on a producer's bottom line too, right, for pig use. And so these two farms, Farm 18 or Barn 18, did have solar panels installed. So that with those solar panels, they were able to offset all of their electricity on that farm. Barn heat, diesel and gasoline, water are common. But just it goes to show for two farms um, that 3% can be drastically different. But overall, it is a smaller portion of that farm level footprint. So as we've been doing this, we have um, also been talking with producers about what they, what they understood or what they um, could remember hearing, for example, about footprints leading up to this exercise. Whenever we uh, ask producers, what's your reason for participating in this project, um, a lot of them wanted to be able to address questions and concerns raised about pork production. It goes back to that, uh, that uh, desire to be bigger players in that, those conversations about sustainability and conservation on the farm. We ended up having to ask most of our participants to participate, so if someone asked me, it came up pretty high as well. And then simply curiosity, something we wanted to do but haven't had the resources or time to do. What do they hope to gain from participating? Um, overall, the reasons, uh, when we looked at all the responses, they're fairly evenly split. But the reasons for doing these footprint calculations are numerous. It can improve that ability to be con conversant in these conversations about sustainability. It gives a baseline number to start from just to know what that baseline is, so know what direction it can move in. Um, but then these inf the information in these footprints can look at, can help inform future management decisions and building decisions and ways to reduce a carbon footprint calculator. So our lessons learned in this are that footprints have the potential to add to that description of, of continuous improvement by an operation. But in order to have that description, or in order to have that conversation about continuous improvement, it is, it's nice to have a number to start from, at least know where it's moving. But in order to go, to go with that number, there needs to be some understanding about what went into building that number. Those questions about what that scope is of that footprint. Where does it start and where does it end? That's, a, that's an important piece. Um, a lot of uh, folks that we worked with on this project, when we asked, you know, what's in a carbon footprint, a lot of their, their focus was what's happening right on the farm. You know, the electricity use, the fuel use. Um, a few recognize the feed to this, to this footprint, or at least to our definition of footprint, um, but it wasn't front and center on most people's minds, even though it's such a big part. And most of the producers we talked about were very concerned about environmental issues and doing their best. Uh, a lot of that was on the manure management side, which is recon uh, recognized in the footprint, but it's not as major a part as maybe they perceived it to be initially. With these footprints, we have the ability to individually and collectively move that baseline over time so that the calculations, and by doing the calculations, they can improve this decision making. But overall, I think it's really this communication of shared goals that's, that's important. <laughs>